and what's and why's and wherefores. Here you'll find your what nots and therefores. So come on along, let's find out what's going on. Where's and when's and who's and what's it's. No matter what your taste, you can trust it's the place where you can find all your new Disney news. No matter what you taste, you can trust It's the place where you can find all your new Disney news Welcome to the Sweep Spot Podcast, current events edition as of April 12th, 2024 All right, it's glad to be here for this episode of our current events As we catch up on what's been happening at the Disneyland Resort over the last couple of weeks That's right. I'm Lynn, and Ken is my co-host, and we are both former Disneyland custodial cast members, and we talk Disneyland, and we are the ones that host the number one Disneyland podcast hosted by two former Disneyland custodians. Number one. We are also the authors of the books Cleaning the Kingdom. We have two different volumes with two different content is different in each book um so you can get those we have signed copies of the second book on our website thesweepspot.com or you can get both copies in paperback at amazon not signed but um you can get them on amazon or if you um, like digital copies like kindle you can get those there and we also have them on audiobook audio audible and wherever audiobooks are found um, also, we have a Patreon, and what we do is it helps us uh, to pay the bills here. Things get more expensive the longer you do this and more episodes you have, and just... Um, my you know, my fees go up, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. That's... The contracts are ridiculous, yeah. but... Um, <laughs> no, but <laughs> we have a lot of expenses and things we do, so um, it really does help us out and also gives you some bonus content and uh, some cool perks. So you get one bonus episode delivered to you that we record once a month. It's usually about 30 minutes long and it's just Ken and I talking about different topics surrounding Disneyland and usually like at current events, but we expand on it sometimes. Um, Also, um, you can join our chat room as we record the current events once a month. We have... Uh, the chat room opened as we're recording and people can leave their comments and um, I kind of respond back sometimes and, and include those comments sometimes into our conversation and it's a lot of fun and the people who have been doing it are really enjoying it and you can do that um, by going to our website thesweepspot.com and click on the Patreon link or go to Patreon and search the sweep spot and that's five dollars or more per month um, you get those perks. Um, one more thing, we also are um, going to be at the Disney, well, they've changed the name. What is it, like the ultimate It's, it's, it's the D23, D23 event, D23. but it's, yeah. you know. They've changed yeah. the name. But we're going to be there. Um, you know, in past years, we've been at a booth um, all day long uh, for th- all three days. And this time, we will be there. But we'll be there at scheduled times and we'll be um, at Laughing Places booth. So we're kind of like slowly introducing what we're doing. And we don't know the times yet, but um, mm-hmm. it'll probably be somewhere in the middle of the day each time. And we'll be at their booth there to sell our books. And if you'd like to come by and say hi, we'll probably have buttons available. And um, we'll keep you posted on the times. Uh, that we will be there. So it should be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it. And it will also give us an opportunity to walk around and enjoy it ourselves so we can report back to you on what we see and our opinions and everything. So I'm really looking forward to that. And that's in August. I think it's what, uh, well, you can't even buy tickets. So if you don't have tickets now and get them from a scalper. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to, yeah, they don't sell, uh, the tickets are sold out. So um, 
those of so you that do what you can, you know, yeah. marry somebody who's got tickets and then afterwards you can divorce them. I'm just kidding. That's a terrible thing to say. Um, but no, I, I, if you've got tickets, we'll be happy to see you there. Yeah. And I'll be in the parks a couple of days before. So, uh, if you wanted to meet up somehow, um, uh, just say hi, and you're not going to be at D23, um, I can arrange that somehow. All right. Well, um, Oh, I did want to say one more thing. Um, you know that I'm a travel planner for concierge and um, you hear the little promo we put in each episode, but I did want to include that there's a lot of promotions going on right now for Walt Disney World. So if you're thinking about going there anytime soon, um, there's a deal for you there because they're, they're just, they've been pumping out these uh, promotions and things. So you can contact me and we can discuss that. Um, I give you some prices and stuff, but, um, yeah, at no cost to you. All right, Ken, let's, uh, get right into it. Cause I know we have a lot to discuss. Hello everyone. This is Eric Johnson with Concy ears and welcome to the D one eighty. While Ken and Lynn cover all things Disneyland, in the D-180, we take a spin around the rest of the Disney universe, and we do it in 180 seconds. Let's jump right in. Let's begin our journey this week by actually not talking about any cruise ships at all. None. Not one, I swear. At least I think I do. Let's visit the International Flower and Garden Festival at Epcot again. The festival is still in full swing right now, and there are plenty of amazing topiaries to view, food kiosks to visit, and great musicians to groove to every night. The journey of water, inspired by Moana, is bubbling away in the world nature section of the park, delighting guests young and old. This new feature is packed with opportunities to learn about plant life and the cycle of water on our planet. It's a new take on the old educational opportunities that used to fill the front of the park. Give it a look the next time you're around. This is a walk-through attraction, so lines to enter are rarely long. Once you start meandering through the pathways, take your time to enjoy the sights and sounds around you. I know the journey of water is high on my list when I get to the parks next weekend. I and thousands of other runners will be jogging through the parks during the Springtime Surprise Weekend from April 13th through the 16th. I can't wait to check out the new 10-mile route through Disney's Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Epcot. If you want to join in on the fun, I'm sorry, but you missed out on a lot of the 2024 season. There are some race bibs still available for volunteers for the event. But don't worry. Based on the popularity of this year's race set, Disney will definitely announce plenty more races for next year. Stay tuned to us and, um, I guess, run Disney for more info as we get it. Elsewhere in Epcot, we've been warned of more changes to come. The ever-popular test track by Chevrolet is heading down for some renovations mid-June. And not just a quick overlay or some track adjustments. If rumors and concept art are true, we're getting a whole new experience with this high-speed attraction in World Discovery. Let's not even start with all of the things that might be happening over at Disney's Animal Kingdom and behind Fantasyland and Big Thunder Mountain in the Magic Kingdom. I'm pretty sure we're going to see plenty more coming out at the upcoming D23 event. Tickets to the D23 Expo went fast from what I heard. It seems like everybody is riding high on the excitement of big panels announcing movies, shows, and park attractions. I won't be able to attend myself, but I know plenty of you listeners will be. Stop by and say hi to Ken and Lynn for me. I hope you enjoyed our quick spin around the rest of the Disney universe. If you'd like to learn more about these Disney adventures or just have a few questions, please come on over. Visit the social media and websites of both The Sweep Spot and Ponzi Ears. Then reach out to Lynn, your personal travel planner. He looks forward to planning something special for you and your family. For Concy Ears, I'm Eric Johnson, and this has been your D180. Looking to go to Disneyland Resort in California, Walt Disney World Resort in Florida, Alani in Hawaii, or on a Disney cruise, or Adventures by Disney Vacation, I am here to help you book the best vacation possible, and my expertise and services won't cost you anything extra. Disney pays me, not you. As a perk by booking a package with me, I can also book your dining reservations, park reservations, tours, shuttles, and more. Let me do the hard work while you get excited about your upcoming Disney vacation. I 
can also book Universal Studios trips as well. By booking with me this year, you will receive three months free of our Patreon perk, like our bonus episodes, and join in on our current events live. So contact me at L Baron. That's L B A R R O N at concierge.com. That's C O N C I E A R S dot com. Or the sweep spot at gmail.com. Now we're going to have the current events. Ken, what do you have for us? Oh, Lynn, there's a few things to discuss. All right. Uh, let's start with the big news corporate wide. Um, it come This one comes from MiceChat.com. Samantha Davis Friedman right, reports that Iger defeats shareholder revolt and reveals Avatar boat ride at Disneyland. And it says here... Um, This is from April 3rd, and it says, During today's Walt Disney Company annual shareholders meeting, a pivotal vote on leadership threatened several board members, including Disney CEO Bob Iger. However, Bob not only came out victorious, but celebrated his victory by offering a first look at what guests, quote, might expect, end quote, from an avatar experience at Disneyland. Hmm. What guests might expect. Well, guests expect all kinds of things. Doesn't mean those are going to happen. Right, uh, right. As, as I'm, uh, you know, I'll, I'll continue in the, this vein. Um, from the official Disney Parks blog, uh, Josh DeMauro, who's chairman of Disney Experiences, you know, in charge of the parks, he wrote something called Continuing to Turbocharge Disney Experiences. Yes, Josh, tomorrow, it's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. So uh, anyway, uh, I'll never <laughs> give up using that joke. Uh, as he wrote here, in part, we are thrilled to unveil a piece of inspirational artwork developed for a potential. <laughs> There's a lot of weasel words here. Uh, inspirational artwork developed for a potential new avatar experience at the Disneyland Resort. We are excited about the stories our guests could experience at Walt's original theme park destination after approval of Disneyland Forward, including the chance to experience all new avatar adventures with a visit to Pandora. Avatar is the latest example of how we are looking to create new and innovative ways to bring our powerful stories to life. Over the past decade, we've delivered massive, immersive experiences at our destinations around the world, including new lands and attractions based on Star Wars, The Avengers, Pixar, and more. So, um... Mm. Yeah, and uh, you know, Orange County Register, Brady McDonald got in on that, and they, they had first look at Avatar themed land proposed for Disneyland. Fans of Avatar, the way of water, um, that grossed two point three billion dollars at the box <laughs> office, may soon be able to board a boat and explore the Pandoran oceans seen in this blockbuster film if Disneyland moves forward with plans for an Avatar-themed land teased for the Anaheim theme park resort. The concept art shows jutting rocks and floating mountains amid gushing geysers and alien flora. A boat filled with riders passes through an aqua green lagoon leading toward a cascading waterfall. Iger described the concept art as creative inspiration for a potential avatar experience being designed by Walt Disney Imagineering, Disney's creative arm. Um, let's see. Oh, excuse me. I, <laughs> I skipped over the period there. Being designed by Walt Disney Imagineering. Disney's creative arm is teaming with avatar filmmaker 
James Cameron on the new land. Iger has been teasing an exciting Avatar experience for the Disneyland Resort since February 2023. At the, at the time, Iger described Avatar as a core franchise for Disney. A D23 blog post promised the Disneyland Resort's Avatar experience would rival Pandora, the world of Avatar-themed land in Disney's Animal Kingdom in Florida. During the shareholder meeting, Iger also discussed the $1.9 billion Disneyland <laughs> forward proposal seeking approval by the Anaheim City Council on April 16th. So uh, that's coming right up for, you know, our early downloaders uh, will we'll hear that. Uh, we'll hear about that in the news uh, coming right up. So, you know, and, and not to be left out, micechat.com also, um, Samantha Davis Friedman had everything we know about Disneyland's avatar themed land. And let's see here. I'll tell you, I'll tell you everything we really actually do know about it. All right. It's based on, it's, it's based on Avatar. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's it. Now she says, we all know that there's a big difference between an experience and a land. But back in March, Disney CEO Bob Iger stated an Avatar themed land will be coming to the Disneyland Resort. And at today's Walt Disney Company shareholders meeting, he backed it up with concept artwork. Okay, so Lynn, I've got things to say, but what do you have to say about this? Well, concept art, as you know, is just, and especially in this case, you have the uh, shareholders and the board and everything you're trying to impress them to invest more so you're not going to put in anything that's real detailed or even maybe correct on what they're really doing you know it's pretty much just to to sell the idea that they're going to put this land there um i've seen people kind of zooming in and trying to pick apart you know what's in it but i don't yeah, know they're like they're, they're like treating it like it's a they're treating right. it like they're in the CIA and it's a photo <laughs> of a camp on the other side of the, of right. the planet. Right. It, it, it looks like it, you know, a boat ride possibly, but I don't, I don't know with the show building. I don't see. Yeah. We can go on in this for a while because people where, were like, Oh, Oh, I know exactly where that's going to be. And I, uh, you know, yeah. based on, based on this, this piece of, of concept art, which, yeah. you know, they could they could level something that's already there and and put put the you know a new experience there but i have one thought if they don't want to expand into a new area but they want to use an existing area at california venture you know they could get rid of a uh, grizzly river run and put that whole in that whole side of the park that that area um soaring over pandora <laughs> right so they could they could do that you know that's a pretty big you know footprint of an area just a thought you know. i know that that there's been talk about you know the disneyland forward and the, the expansion areas that they've spoke about you know across the street next to pixar place hotel mm -hmm. i don't that would be years down the line because they have to figure out a way to get the guests there. You're talking about roads and I mean, it's, it's a big ordeal and yeah, then it would be to put it in an existing. There's a lot more infrastructure area. with the, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, it's easier to put it in well, attached to an existing park. You well, know. let me ask you this. Do you think that, Okay, so Universal announced this epic universe, you know. Disney, mm -hmm. that's in Florida, but, you know, they in Hollywood they're building a um Fast and Furious roller coaster that everyone's really yeah. excited about. I could see Disney wanting to get this rolling pretty quickly, especially um Tiana's Bayou, you know, adventures coming along, but that's mm -hmm. not, you know, that's not gonna necessarily bring new crowds you know necessarily right. it's a re-theme of an attraction but avatar would bring 
new audiences like Universal received new audience, new people that mm-hmm. didn't normally go to Universal for the Harry Potter stuff. So, right. So you, I think Disney might try to put it, put something in where they can develop and open it within, you know, two years rather than, uh, you know, something that might take five years. You know what? They, they could put it on the, the southwest corner of the resort where there's parking currently for downtown Disney. And right. then they can right. retheme the Pixar Place Hotel to, uh, now I know I know <laughs> retheming a hotel sounds like a, a big deal, you know, but they could retheme the Pixar well, they just Place rethemed Hotel it. <laughs> to the Avatar, you know. Yeah. I know that I'm kind of making a joke. I know. Um, so it's yeah. Uh, Maybe we'll find out more uh, at D twenty three. You know, and I think I've said it before, and I'll say it now. Uh, they could have an idea of they, they, they might have something already planned out look we're going to you know this is what we're going to do we're going to build these two attractions and have you know these restaurants and these shops and we're going to put it right here and this is how we're going to do it and blah 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 they might have that all fleshed out and then it, it could all change before it happens and uh, we mentioned in the story there the disneyland forward vote there's a vote coming up uh, in, in mere days, you know, mm-hmm. and of course, for most people listening, this has probably already happened because, you know, people don't, as amazing as it is uh, to think about, people don't rush to download our podcast the very moment it's available. And I don't know why, but I do understand that there are people who don't. Yeah. So um, they're probably getting caught up on the on past episodes. But uh, the there's a misconception i think where people are like well gee, you know if they vote yes on disneyland forward on the 16th then we can you know see shovels going you know in a, in a, of, of a few, <laughs> in a in a few weeks yeah on, on the 17th it's like no 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 you have to understand that disneyland forward is about zoning it's 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 about permission to do things that they can't that the disney understands that they can't do under current zoning restrictions now you know anything else they want to build like you know once this went forward gets approved now disney will go back to the to the city and say all right here's our plans to do this you know we're going to build a parking structure here we're going to build a hotel here we want to build uh some shops and restaurants right here you know then they've got to get the normal approvals they would get for any other construction project right so you know just because disneyland forward gets approved you know if it gets approved it doesn't mean that you know shovels go the next day so i mean i would love for that to happen but you know we'll have to wait and see it's not 1955 (laughs) right it's not like you know when they build the park in a year um it'd be amazing but yeah yeah well, we will right. have to see. I think, like you said, we'll, we'll find out more soon um, as far as timeline and what will be in these spaces. Uh, maybe D23? That's still even early. You know, that's what's months away. So mm-hmm. uh, we will definitely be following this story. So All let's right. move on here. So the next thing, this is from the OC Register and by, of course, Brady McDonald. Um it says here, Disneyland to convert Utopia cars from gas to electric. Disneyland will electrify Utopia and convert the attraction from gas engines to in the next few years, according to Disneyland officials. Disneyland officials would not say whether the Utopia cars would be converted to fully electric or hybrid vehicles. The last major Utopia refurbishment took place in 2016 when Honda became the ride sponsor. Previous ride sponsors were Chevron, um, and that was from 2000-2012, and Richfield Oil, 1955-1970. to And according to D23, it says in 1955, opening day attraction was redesigned in 1959-64-68 according to D23. An extensive remodeling related to 
Chevron sponsorship closed Utopia from September 99 through June 2000. And uh, so, yeah, the it's interesting because, you know, a lot of people have always said, you know, why don't they change to electric? You know, that's like the newest thing now. Why are they still running these old gas engines? But they in this, from what I understand, this was just kind of thrown out there. It wasn't like an official like this is when we're doing it. And um, so I don't I don't know the timeline. It said in a few years. So it just kind of seemed real. Um, no, no details, it's, really. Yeah, it's kind of vague vague that's what i was thinking and i don't know if they get rid if they get rid of uh the gas um you know, it's gonna be quiet over there they're gonna have to make these cars make the same noises they, that would be cool right and then pump in the smell you know <laughs> yeah yeah well and then and then electric car i mean that these things these cars run from you know some days from even before the park opens because they got to get them going but these cars run at least from 8 a.m to midnight you know that's what 16 hours so it's just i mean when are, when are you going to be able to charge these and how often and will they will there be a spot where they park the cars where it gets a quick charge and you know when while passengers are getting in i don't know but that there's that sounds like a, a whole big project there that they really didn't have any details on. I I kind of don't think it's going to happen, but you you I mean, just because they said it doesn't mean it's going to happen. But we'll see. It's uh, what do you think about that? Well, um, <laughs> you know, I, I know there's people who are like, it's time to get rid of them. You know, well, they that don't, too. Yeah, they, they don't want to like get them. rid of it. We well, and and then again, I. I don't want to be repetitive, but, uh, and I really don't want to be redundant and, and I don't want to be repetitive, but the, we forget what it's like for the kids to, um, you know, to be able to drive their own vehicle. Right. And, uh, it's not a chore to them. <laughs> it's something mm -hmm. they look forward to. So, if you take it out, I think you need to have some sort of equivalent experience elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing they could do is elevate it, you know, make it all up and, you know, elevated, elevated highways above Tomorrowland, you know, and free up the footprint for some other stuff. You know, roughly have it follow the old people over track and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it, none of this stuff that's planned or talked about you know you can count on until it's already happened so um right i i mean i hope they never get rid of it it's an opening day attraction and like you said it, it does serve a purpose maybe not to anyone our age or anyone you know 16 and above but um it does serve a purpose and uh, yes i can't i could just say from my before i had my son Luke, I, we didn't, you know, I didn't care so much for the attraction and, mm -hmm. you know, I was appreciated it was there, but I never really went on it. But then I started to go on it with him because he wanted to, and it made me appreciate it more. In fact, I love going out there because when you leave that station, you feel like you're kind of uh, removed from the park in a way, you know? Yeah. Yep. I like that. And, and I hope they, and he was so happy to do it. I mean, he's so excited. He was trying to, he's so serious, trying to steer it. So it doesn't hit the, you know, the, the thing in the middle to bounce. Yeah. And it's just, I have videos. So I just hope they never get rid of that because just if he's enjoying it, I know there's many, many others that, that do. And that's the purpose of having an attraction at Disneyland is that people enjoy it. So Anyhow, that's my rant. We still have not done a deep dive history of Utopia. I've started haven't. to do the research oh and uh, and uh, never finished. So yeah, we need to we need to do that. Well, I, I could be wrong, but I think Bob Gurr might have been involved with it. Yes, you think so? 
Um, probably. I think, I've heard, I think I've heard that before. Um, On our show, he did talk yeah. about it. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I want to remind people that all of these are posted to our web in the current events portion of the website at thesweepspot.com. So you can click to get the entire story uh, if you prefer, if you don't believe us, if you think we're making this up. Um, Never. Yeah. No uh, no artificial stuff here. This is all natural. Uh, <laughs> okay. Brady yes. McDonald, uh, you know, they keep him busy over at the Orange County Register. He... Uh, he had an article, nine, this is a late-breaking article, by the way, Meet the 19 Bayou Critters Moving in Tia, into Tiana's Bayou Adventure at Disneyland. And there's a fox and a bear and a rabbit and a turtle and a bunch of geese and... Uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> it says here, Walt Disney Imagineering has revealed 19 critters in three bands that will play Zydeco, Rara style, and Afro-Cuban music on makeshift instruments and populate the bayou in the revamped Tiana's Bayou Adventure attraction. Hmm. Uh, the first musical group of six animatronic bayou critters will play Z Zydeco style uh, music with the Gonna Take You There song from the film. The musicians will include um, Happy, Dopey, Sneezy. You know, um, <laughs> well, there's a bunch here. By yeah. Halia, Gritty, Bo, Apollo. Um, you know, you you need you really need to check them out for yourself, folks. See, there's yeah. Rufus. We've already mentioned some of these before. There's Timoleon. There's a, there's a second musical group that's gonna you know the, has six animatronic Bayou characters and they'll play Rara style music. Imported from Haiti. Hey, all right. Um, do they really often, need all names? Like, do they really need names? I mean, uh, they do, do because that's how you merchandise them. Oh, uh, I was going to uh, say the the uh, animatronics in Splash Mountain. Did they? I mean, a couple of them had names because they were. You know, yeah. I don't know. Okay, cool. Well, the third musical group of four frogs will play Afro-Cuban music with jazzy sounds and complex rhythms uh the band members include philippe myra mondo blah blah you can yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's a lot uh so there's imagery and stuff like that so you can check it out uh and i also wanted to add uh that they had an article from before that disneyland is going to close critter country during the splash mountain renovation uh, it's also Brady McDonald is at the registry says that Disneyland will temporarily close Critter Country on May 1st. And we've, we've kind of mentioned that last time, but this is a subsequent story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're going to close it on May 1st, which means they can't do their typical May 1st day, May, May 1st parade that they like to do. Um, to, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> to to reimagine two retail shops as Louis Critter Come Club and Ray's Berets. And, uh, the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh Dark Ride will close May 1st for construction with no reopening date set. So it's closed indefinitely. Um, the Hungry Bear Restaurant will remain open during the renovation work. And uh, of course, Louise's, uh, Louise's Critter Club will take over the half of Pooh Corner closest to the former Splash Mountain Log Ride, while Ray's Verays will replace the Briar Patch Shop um the half of poo corner closest to win the poo attraction will remain open as a candy shop because of course it will you gotta have the candy um so yeah yep critter country closing Lynn. except you know. hungry bear it's a historical uh landmark hungry bear now yeah that's true <laughs> um you know <laughs> They haven't announced. I know that Walt Disney World, I don't know if you've been following a little bit, but they've already been testing with like Imagineers in the the boats. Yep. Um, they were asking if you were going to go out there and ride it and be one of the first, but they... They need to fly me out there and, yeah, and cover yeah. my expenses, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you'd be happy to... Uh, That's re right. Relive that role. But... Um, 
I don't know. Like, it seems to me that it's it will be open by summer at Walt Disney World. I think that the rain, California had a lot of rain this this winter. Um, it's been really rainy for the past year plus compared to normal rain yeah. levels. You know. Yeah. Well, so I'm sure that set back the project a little bit, I would think. Um, I mean, a lot of the work takes place indoors, but they still have scaffolding <clears throat> around the mountain that probably will come down soon, but you know. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Ken? <clears throat> do you think they want to get open by the holidays? By, you know, Christmas or before? Oh, uh, I'm maybe. sure they'd love to be open by then. By Halloween, maybe? Uh, you know, I... It's going to be a big deal whenever it is. Yeah, I mean, I think they would like to have them both open at the same time. I think they originally had said that, but because of whatever, you know, the different reasons, they that may not be the case. I don't, you know, ideally you would want to have them both open at the same time because you don't want people to watch the videos and get word of mouth of Disney Worlds and then... You know how that works and it, it, it could work in an advantage or disadvantage um yeah so we will f we will see um i'm sure we'll hear something soon in the next couple months here i would think all right let's move on so the next one is from brady mcdonald over at the oc register and it's Disneyland explores backside of fireworks with Star Wars Pyro Show. A Star Wars fireworks show at Disneyland that turns a strangely quiet corner of Galaxy's Edge into a vibrant stage full of storytelling and music tells the tale of heroes, villains, and the battle between light and darkness. The new Fire of the Rising Moons fireworks show debuted in Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland as part of the two-month-long Season of the Force seasonal event that continues through June 2nd. Ever-changing versions of the Star Wars fireworks show will continue in Galaxy's Edge after Season of the Force comes to an end. Oh, that's cool. Uh, the Galaxy's Edge pyrotechnics display synced to Star Wars soundtrack will vary depending on which Disneyland fireworks show is playing on any particular night. Either Wondrous Journeys, Mickey's Mixed Magic, or Together Forever. Interesting. Um, the current version, Fire of the Rising Moons in Galaxy's Edge, is paired with the Wondrous Journeys Nighttime Spectacular playing in the rest of the park through Sunday, April 14th. The second take of Star Wars fireworks will be paired with Mickey's Mixed Magic on April 15th to the 25th. And there's other uh, articles here from Laughing Place. Um, it has a video of um, Fire of the Rising Moons. You can check that out in our show notes. Um, very good, right? I mean, yeah. Any, anything more? I mean, they, I've seen the fireworks back there, but you can't hear the music that, mm -hmm. that's playing in the rest of the park, wherever you know you can see fireworks. And it's actually a really nice place to see the fireworks with the, the you know, the Galaxy's Edge spires and all the mountains there. So, very good. Well, I the Star Wars music has always been a huge part of the franchise. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so Very iconic, yeah. It's it it really makes sense to incorporate it somehow, at least, even if it's not all the time, <laughs> right? But yeah, so I think that's I think this is a plus for sure. Oh yeah, right. Adding something is usually good. So yeah. All right, let's uh, move along. All right. Um, well, we're continuing with Star Wars. And there is the... Uh, I don't know if you've seen these photos and videos. Um, Laughing Place has some. There's the mm -hmm. BDX droids 
Uh, BDX droids appear for the first time during Disneyland's Season of the Force. And this was a story by Luke uh, Manning. And uh, he says, after a short play test, interactive BDX droids are now making daily appearances at Disneyland Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Last fall, Imagineers play-tested interactive droids, uh, and today, and this is back on April 5th, today, with the kickoff of Season of the Force at Disneyland, these adorable uh, droids are now making daily appearances, running April 5th through June 2nd. During the event, guests may encounter the droid at various locations uh, around Black Spire Outpost throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I wanted to throw in that MyChat.com has uh, your complete guide to Disneyland's intergalactic extravaganza for Season of the Force by Dusty Sage. So if you want, you know, as they say here, we've assembled your definitive guide to navigating the galaxy far, far away, right in the heart of Disneyland from April 5th through June 2nd. So Season of the Forest Land is underway. What do you, Have you seen these droids? I did. I, I think it's great. I mean, they originally, before Galaxy's Edge opened, they had mentioned there was going to be droids in the... And there had been a little bit up to this point, but um, I think it's great. I don't know. Um, I hope to see more, and I hope it's uh, not just a couple times a day. I hope it's yeah. kind of, you know what I mean? be nice for them to kind of hang around there a lot you know yeah it's, but it's hard it's hard to find cast members that small and then that's what know. i was gonna say How do you... <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to fit them in there so and then, then they need breaks you know so yeah well uh that that i think it's great i think they need to do that um galaxy's edge is always getting better they're trying to improve things they're seeing what guests like and don't like and what they've want there um so i don't think it'll ever stay the way it is so that's good <sighs> yeah all looking right for, looking forward to you know droids taking over over there that's right all right well the next story we have is um from mice chat staff <laughs> over at Mice Chat, our, our friends over there, we that's have... A, that's a prolific writer, Mice Chat staff, that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not their name, right? <laughs> that would be interesting. Okay, it says, um, come, so coming soon to Downtown Disney, we're finally starting to see the light at the end of Downtown Disney District Construction Tunnel. Here's the latest news from Disneyland's rapidly evolving dining, shopping, and entertainment district. Adios to Tortilla Joe's. Tortilla Joe's restaurant has closed their doors for good after 20 years in the district. The quick service Takura, 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 I don't know. Takura, Takura. Takura, okay. Yeah. At Tortilla, it's a little uh, walk up window there. Uh, will remain open until April 14th. The uh, Patina Group, the owner of Tortilla Joe's, is opening two new Mexican restaurants just steps away. You can read more about those new locations a little further below. So, I we uh, we're going to expand on this a little more, Downtown Disney, and discuss kind of just some opinions and things um, uh, as a Patreon for our Patreons, a bonus episode that we record once a month. So if you want to um, hear us talk about that, you can sign up now and you won't miss out. So, um, yeah, join our Patreon on our website. And uh, we'll you hear yeah. us more, talk more about Downtown Disney because it is fascinating. Um, it's growing. You know, they're changing. It, I mean, there's hardly anything original that's been there. Tortilla Joe's was one of the original restaurants there yeah oh well I mean, there's a lot going on in downtown disney yeah um 
Brady McDonald reported, you know, Disneyland Steakhouse makes a comeback, this time in downtown Disney. And uh, this is from April 10th. He says, Disneyland will once again have a steakhouse after shuttering a clubby and pricey restaurant during the pandemic that took diners back to the bygone era of lavish decadence and old Hollywood glamour with dirty martinis, bone-in ribeyes, and a legendary 24-layer chocolate cake. Disneyland plans to open the new steakhouse and barbecue concepts at the former Tortilla Joe's location in downtown Disney. No opening dates were announced for the steakhouse restaurant and adjacent barbecue eatery. Um, they need a barbecue. I mean, you know, they used to have barbecue back at the ranch, but the ranch is gone. Um, mm. The Disneyland Hotel uh, was home for decades to Steakhouse 55 and its predecessors until the restaurant met its demise during the COVID-19 pandemic. Walt Disney Imagineering created a lobby, a new lobby lounge in the former Steakhouse 55 location. Um, hmm. So, yeah, they don't know. There's speculation in the article about what it could be, you know, um, part of a chain, you know. Right. So, yeah. Well, it's good. I, I mean, you know, the, the uh, barbecue part is... Uh, seems really interesting because we did lose a barbecue you know at disneyland a while back i know they they kind of moved it over to the riverbell terrace for a little bit but um it'll be nice to have barbecue food in downtown disney yeah I mean, who, that who would be good like, who doesn't like barbecue food right well uh vegetarians and, and, well, well I guess you can barbecue. I guess you can barbecue the vegetables, but you know. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be neat. Um, glad they're adding that addition in there. All right. Uh, let's see what do we have next? Oh, interesting. So some more downtown Disney news. We have there's a, uh, there's a lot of it. Oh, that's yeah. OC register Brady McDonald. Din Tai Fung coming to downtown Disney this summer. Disneyland diners hungry for the legendary Shanghai style soup dumpling, dumplings that dribble down your chin won't have to wait much longer for Din Tai Fung to open at downtown Disney. The Michelin awarded restaurant from Taiwan will open this summer at the outdoor shopping mall next door to Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. The new time frame means the restaurant should open between mid-June and mid-September. This is a very popular uh, restaurant chain that um, I think is going to go over really well and something they didn't really have um, in the resort at all, really. Yeah. For a while, so no, I the the getting a variety into uh, downtown Disney would be good. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I mean they another story uh, was that a trio of Mexican restaurants are coming to downtown Disney in May, mm -hmm. and this was updated as of April. This is from Brady McDonald, and it's uh, it's updated as of April eleventh uh, in the afternoon. The Patina restaurant group announced that Paseo, Centrico, and Tiendita will open May 2nd in downtown Disney. And a ribbon cutting ceremony is scheduled for May 1st for Paseo, Centrico, and Tiendita. Uh, like most restaurants, the three new locations may have some dining opportunities leading up to the grand opening celebration. The new Paseo restaurant. Um, Centrico Courtyard Bar and Tiendita Grab and Go Stand will take over spaces formerly occupied by Catal Restaurant, Uva Bar, and Sprinkles Cupcake Bakery. Uh, Gaetan's food pairs, his love of his homeland of uh, Hulzuko, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I'm the one having trouble. Um, well, anyway, his homeland in Mexico mm -hmm. with French culinary style and technique. 
Uh, Paseo's menu will include ceviche, lamb, um, barbacoa, uh, cochinita. Po- I, I got a better. I got to stop for trying to pronounce these. <laughs> um, it's roasted marinated pork. Yeah. But um, also mussels uh, and there's uh, stuffed corn masa triangles. Uh, there's all a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. My mouth is watering. Um, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Uh, Centrico will focus on tequila-based cocktails along with a menu featuring uh, quesa birria, huh, chicken enchiladas, and <laughs> shareable pizza-like Oaxican uh, dish called uh, de Yuda. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well uh, part of the problem is I'm sitting too far from the computer and my eyes are failing me. <laughs> Tiendita's self-orchestrating kiosk will offer Mexican street food like fish tacos, uh, esquites, which is roasted corn, uh, used, uh, there will be ice cream stuffed chocolate tacos, chorizo breakfast burritos, and chilaquiles, which are marinated tortilla chips with eggs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Jeez, wow. you know, so much happening at Downtown Disney. Too much. We can't even keep up. We can't even pronounce them. But no, I can't. You know, <laughs> I, 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 we need a shirt for the sweep spot. That says, you know, my, my name or you know, my restaurant was mispronounced on the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sweep spot. anyway. Yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds yummy. Uh. Oh. More downtown Disney. Um, yeah, I can believe it or not. It's <laughs> from Laughing Place. Uh, Trisha Kennedy says, uh, Marceline's confectionery will temporarily close for an expansion and reimagination at the downtown Disney district. Disney Park blog explains it as, we're designing an all new expanded and completely reimagined confection experience featuring your favorite treats and fun new tasty offerings while work on this location will be soon will soon be in progress you can visit marceline's cart coming soon to the district to pick up your caramel apples churro toffee and other handcrafted goodies Mm -hmm. yeah sounds good yeah it's always uh, the few times i've been in there it's like crowded so maybe you know they're gonna have a bigger space i mean yeah well um you know there's after uh, dark nights that are still coming there's uh um on april 5th the disney parks blog posted that the, a guide to disneyland after dark pride night and that was from uh, kelsey lynch and as they say disneyland after dark pride night returns to the disneyland resort for its second year with colorful celebrations, joyful photo opportunities, event merchandise, fabulous food and drinks. And as previously shared, this separately ticketed after hours event will be held at Disneyland Park on June 18th and the 20th. Uh, Today, we're excited to share more details about the fun you can expect at this event, plus information on when tickets will go on sale. And, uh, the uh, the register reported on it as they point out tickets for the pride night events go on sale tuesday april 9th which of course is a past as you're hearing this uh for magic key annual pass holders and thursday april 11th which is also passed uh for general for the general public ticket sales begin uh, start both days no earlier than 9 a.m and i'm assuming that's pacific time so um if you need your tickets you don't have them yet now you know so um yep disneyland cracks down on disability access service misuses and abuses oh okay um it says here disneyland and disney world will attempt to rein in the unwieldy disability access service that has bogged down attraction queues and backed up genie plus lanes as a result of tripling in usage of the program ripe with misuse and abuse the disneyland and walt disney resorts updated the disability access service programs on tuesday april 9th 
that offer assistance to theme park visitors with developmental disabilities like autism and other neurodivergent disorders. Correct. Um, the changes go into effect May 20th at the Walt Disney World Resort and June 18th at the Disneyland Resort with the goal of limiting the disability access service program to only guests who require the services, according to the Disneyland officials. Mm. DAS is intended for Disneyland visitors with a developmental, developmental disability like autism who are unable to wait in a conventional queue for an extended period of time. DAS visitors get a return time through the Disneyland mobile app comparable to the current standby wait time for an attraction. Disneyland will continue to operate DAS on both coasts and partner with Inspire Health Alliance on the implementation of the updated programs. Mm. Vis yeah, visitors who do not qualify for DAS will be directed to leave the park. No, will be directed... <laughs> to other options like rider switch passes stroller as a wheelchair tags what okay Location. in other words if you yeah your child's not big enough yet to use a wheelchair but they need a wheelchair so the stroller is their wheelchair. oh i see what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Loca location return time passes for older non-ada compliant cues wheelchair transfer options, handheld devices for the visually impaired, and sign language interpreters. Uh, wow. Disney Disney really does, uh, you know, I uh, we thought we might need it. We didn't understand what DAS was at first, and we thought we might need it. But because my wife, uh, her mobility issues are apparent, um, you know, it's, it's not a matter of, you know, neurodivergence or anything like that. Um, so, you know, she can't physically walk through the line. Um, so Disneyland has a bunch of cues that, you know, are not, it's just, it's just easy. It's much easier for the operation for them to use another entrance or whatever. So, um, yeah. And, and it's really hard to, maneuver scooters or wheelchairs and you know scooters have batteries and stuff like that so it gives you <laughs> pardon me i'm getting choked up here yeah uh it gives you the opportunity to basically wait elsewhere um mm -hmm. you get a return time that you know that uh as if you were waiting in line now that does provide that can provide an advantage because then you can go off and do something else instead of having to wait in line because uh, you're virtually waiting in line and so people have abused you know right. various forms and stuff like that but um yeah but but i know that disney goes out of their way i mean it's really uh, even like look at the jungle cruise you know you can mm -hmm. wheel a wheelchair right onto it onto one of those boats and same with uh small world and stuff like that and right, right. Uh, there's all these different ways that they've really uh they go above and beyond to accommodate and then there's people who just take advantage of, of the accommodations mm -hmm. uh, so but you know it's amazing <laughs> the story was so big that uh of course you know the register covers it right but right away they have another story uh <laughs> a separate story about the same basically the same topic it mm -hmm. says Disneyland threatens lifetime ban for disability cheats. Wow. So Disneyland has put disability cheats on notice that if they lie about having ADHD, irritable bowel syndrome, anxiety, or other or uh, any other disorder to get free lightning lane line skipping passes, they will be kicked out of Disney theme parks in the United States forever. Out of Disneyland and the United States? What did you say? <laughs> it sounded like what you said. Parks. In, I said sorry. Oh. In, in, oh, okay. not and. Sorry, my. <laughs> if I'm sorry, if my enunciation and my diction are thought, not well, uh, that's not so good. Pretty extreme. <laughs> well, yeah, they're working with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement to just kick people out of the United States entirely. Uh, um, <laughs> no, it's not a laughing matter. But I just, you know, sometimes it's 
you know, it's fun to Disney, Disneyland spells out the dire penalties for lying. Liar! You're a liar! And during the Disability Access Service registration process, under the Frequently Asked Questions section of the updated DAS page on the theme park's website, so uh, yeah. if ca if caught, D DAS cheats will be permanently stuck in It's a Small World with the sound on. No, permanently barred from the Disneyland and Disney World resorts, and all daily tickets and annual passes will be forfeited without refund, according to the DAS website for both mm -hmm. parks. Um, how would Disneyland catch a disability fraud? Well, the tickets cost so much that they can afford to have an investigator follow you around. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Disneyland doesn't say, but Disney cast members would likely be the first line of defense backed up by the digital trail left by using the Disneyland app for lightning lane access. There are also security cameras covering virtually every corner of the park and security guards monitoring suspicious activities. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So, and a, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of disappointed people. I know that this topic, I've seen this come up in on social media and the comments are all over the place. You know, people that are happy this is happening, people that are really upset. Um, I don't know enough about it to really say a whole lot. I know that um, the last few times we've gone to the parks, my wife has used a scooter to get mainly just to get around the park and then because she's able but she has rheumatoid arthritis but anyway she's able to you know wait in line but so we don't use that pass um or any way to get to use it to use a scooter um to get you know back a line pass but um i know some people if you have like a wheelchair or something then you can still um use a normal lightning lane and return and they'll they'll put you you know in the lightning lane line uh when you return but just like anyone else would if yeah. you can't go in the regular line then they would you know so it's not like you're cheating the line but um there's definitely people that need it because they yeah. they just mentally can't Stand, you know, because I've seen comments all over the place. Like I said, there were, you know, people are saying they can stand in line too long for, you know, because of the sun, um, different things. And it, it just yeah. seemed a little, um, I don't know, you know, so, um, well, nobody, nobody likes to wait a long time, you know, right, but disliking it and having, you know, there are people with, um, neurological conditions mm -hmm. that you know it's not apparent uh just at first glance and it may not be a mobility issue but it does affect you know i mean they they can function fine at, at home or in an office or whatever maybe but you know if you stick them in a crowd a loud noisy crowd you know mm -hmm. for an hour and a half uh oh. and that's just a no go for them you know but there are a lot of people abusing it and uh it becomes an issue and um it does seem like it's been more and more of an issue um the past what 20 years i'd say 15 yeah, yeah it just seemed like it's been for whatever reason you know i know that they had um before the does death thing they had um some issues with people that were renting we talked about on our show years mm -hmm. ago when people are like renting someone that did have handicap access and were able to hang out with them all day in the park and get on you know rides back past but um this sounds yeah. like the inspire health inspire is that they're going to be handling so instead of disney who's not really in the specialty field of you know medical yeah, you can pawn it off to people who that's their that's their whole bailiwick you know? right so they're like you know 
so if people do complain to Disney, like I wasn't accepted and like, well, you know, we don't make those. Yeah. Yeah. Those choices. <laughs> um, yeah. But so, yeah, it's kind of passing it on to them. But at the same time, it it's not their expertise, you know, it never has been. So they, you know, and I don't know what the laws are as far as requiring, you know, like a doctor's note or something. Um, right. I don't know if that in if that new system will require that because you are dealing with a medical facility. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Disney is yeah. run it past counsel, you know, lawyers. Oh, for sure. Uh, as far as uh, complying with all applicable uh, um, disability law, you know. Um. So. Yeah, I don't think they would have done this without doing that. <laughs> so, right. Now, I mean, uh, my, my chat, of course, carries the story too. So if you want to take a look at, there, you can. Um, there is, as usual, a couple of um, mychat.com Disneyland updates. And uh, one was from Andy Castro from April 1st. Yes, yes, April 1st. But it says, Rainy Days, Reveals, and Reinventions. It says, Disneyland's spring break might have been washed out with lingering winter weather. But that didn't stop the news from rolling in. Tickets for this year's D23 Expo went on sale. But the messy rollout left many fans frustrated and without tickets. Meanwhile, Imagineering legend Joe Rohde he has returned to Disney, sparking big hopes in the fan community. At Disneyland, work continues on major projects in New Orleans Square and Queer Country, and downtown Disney's reimagining ramps up. We've got a big update for you today, so let's get started. And of course, you can click through for that. Uh, Dusty Sage had uh, an update on April 8th, The Force Awakens, Tomorrowland Transformation, and Avatar Adventure. So, uh, yeah, you can uh, click through to read all that. There was actually a story in the register about some of the refurbs coming up, and I know you have information on refurbs, right? I do. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Sure. Refurb land. Um, we have the Haunted Mansion, of course. Uh, we do not have a reopening date. The last videos I've seen uh, that people have posted and photos, they're still digging. I don't know what is going on over there. I mean, there was the exterior queue. They tore all that up, and that was... A month or two ago and they're still digging so i don't know maybe they're digging underground i don't know i don't know what they're doing but it's taking a while and um we'll see when it returns it's supposed to be at least by um end of august so we'll see um pirate slayer tsi thompson island um will be down and we'll return Monday the 15th. So just a couple of days for, for those early downloaders. Um, Incredicoaster will be down again. And is down now, actually. And returns on the 19th of April. Redwood Creek Challenge Trail down and no return date. Um, Closed indefinitely. Great moments with Mr. Lincoln will be closed April 16th and no return date. Classic Disney. <laughs> um, Walt, Walt's, you know, Walt's masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. Closed yeah. indefinitely. Yeah. Um, Matterhorn down April 15th and returns on May 3rd. And then we, of course, have Critter Country. Uh, which is closing, like we had mentioned, on um, May 1st. So, yeah, that's really all I have, but... Um, yeah. Well, you know, there's a, there's 
so much going on. And in the article, Brittany McDonald's thing listed, you know, the, the, the usual stuff, but, um, it, it pointed out like he threw in, uh, also not on the temporarily out of order list are several attractions that never returned following the year long pandemic closure that sh shuttered Disneyland and DCA. Disneyland's Star Wars Launch Bay and DCA's Blue, Size, Blue Sky Cellar are being used for uh, Imagination Campus, an educational travel workshop that teaches students about the arts and sciences used in Disney theme parks. And then it says the Magic Eye Theater in Tomorrowland remains dark with no upcoming show in the works. Uh, <laughs> DCA's Hyperion Theater in Hollywoodland briefly returned for a two-month run of Rogers the Musical before closing again with nothing planned for the 2,000-seat Broadway caliber venue. And the Fantasyland Theater no longer has regularly scheduled shows after the tale of the Lion King ended its run in January. So I think Brady's getting a little uh, a little tired of the vacant spaces in the, in the resort too. You know, right. go on, what's happening? I want to I want to write a story about it. Yeah. Uh, what I guess he could do what what could go into the Fantasyland Theater? You know, um, <laughs> yeah, you know write a whole story about that but uh yeah i mean there's uh, i think if if outside vendors controlled those spaces <laughs> i don't think they would be empty i think they would be being used uh yeah so it's you know it's I, interesting I, don't know. I guess there's a lot there's already enough going on at the resort isn't there i mean <laughs> that's probably they can only do so much at once um yeah, but a lot of these were like daytime shows that, um, you know, of course you have Fantasmic World of Color, but you don't have the daytime shows where you can go and sit down and, you know, watch something. That's a good point. It's a nice break from walking around. And uh, yeah, I mean, what you need to do, folks, is stay tuned by listening to us. And you can, you know, every couple of weeks we have these updates mm -hmm. and we keep, you know, we, we explain what's happening at the resort. We give you our perspective on it. And then every other week we have a main topic episode, often, often historical, but not always. Uh, previous, the previously released one was uh, a, someone who had worked at the resort in the mid to late 1970s and uh, early 1980s in several different roles uh, ticket taker ride operator the you know and uh coming up next uh, main topic we're gonna have a returning custodian back who's got so many stories to tell so uh yeah stay tuned subscribe to us wherever you prefer to listen just you know these episodes are free uh make sure you don't miss any of them and uh let your friends know they're here um, what else do we want to say lynn uh, that's it yeah just uh pass the word on and uh leave reviews we we'd love to uh read the reviews we usually do that on our main topic shows at the end so um that really helps us out it helps other listeners find us um so leave us a review if you've been listening to us for a while, but um, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next time.